name is Colleen and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Art Museum. Welcome to We Wednesday. Today we're going to be talking about opposites. Opposites are pairs of words that have different meanings. The opposite of open is closed. The opposite of up is down. Can you think of some pairs of opposites? We'll explore some of those ideas together today. We'll start by reading a story together then we'll be looking at some art from the museum's collection, and we'll end by making our own art together. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you'd like to get a closer look, if you'd like to talk about something with the people that you're with, or if you need to gather some art supplies. Are you ready? Let's get started. Today, we're gonna to be reading a story called Hello, Hello. If you've joined me for We Wednesday before, you may know that when I read a new book, I like to take a look at the cover to see if I can find out some things about the story before I read. Let's take a look at this cover together. What do you notice? I see a few different clues on this cover. I see several different creatures. And they all look very different to me. They're different colors, different shapes, different sizes. What do you think the story might be about based on what we can see? Let's find out. Hello, Hello by Brendan Wenzel. Now before we start the story today, I'm going to invite you to say hello to all the creatures that we're going to see throughout the story today. So you can come up with your own way to say hello. Maybe that's with a movement, like a wave, or a handshake, or a hug. Or maybe that's with a different saying. So maybe you want to say hello out loud to them. Or maybe you'd like to say hello in another language. So you decide how you'd like to say hello, and you can make your movements or your saying while we read the story together. Hello, hello. Black and white. Hello color, hello bright. What kind of animals do you see on this page? We're going to see animals from all over the world throughout the story today. I'll point out a few of them along the way. This one is a squat lobster. Hello stripes. Hello spots. If you could have stripes or spots all over your body, which one would you choose? Hello, giant. Hello, not. Let's imagine that we're really, really big, like this animal here. So big that you can't even fit inside your own home. How do you think you might say hello then? I think I might say hello really low and slow like this. Hello. Now imagine that you're really, really tiny, like this animal here. Maybe you're so small that you can fit in the palm of someone's hand. How do you think you might say hello then? I think I might say hello really high, like hello. <laughs> you can try out your hellos. Now I wanted to point out the animals that are on this page. This is a veiled chameleon and this is a whale shark. Now a whale shark is an endangered animal, which means that it's in danger of disappearing forever. Now, animals can become endangered for many different reasons, from habitat loss, from hunting, or from climate change. So we'll learn about some other endangered animals as we read the story. Hello, 
tongue, ears, hands, and nose. Hello pattern, hello pose. Do you think you can make one of the poses that one of these animals is making? Think about moving your body in a way that feels comfortable to you to mimic one of these animals. Maybe your arms are spread out really wide or your legs are spread out wide or you're trying to curl your body like they are. You decide. I wanted to point out another animal on this page. This is a giant armadillo. And the giant armadillo is threatened, which means that it's in danger of becoming endangered. So it's possible that it could become endangered if conditions don't change. And there's lots of people that are helping to make sure that that doesn't happen. Hello shape, hello show. Hello wonder, hello whoa. Hello quiet. What's the opposite of quiet? Loud. Hello, loud. Hello, wild. Hello, proud. Remember to say your hello. Hello, beauty. Hello, bend. neighbor. Hello, friend. How do you like to say hello to your neighbors and friends? I wanted to point these animals out to you. We have a hippopotamus here, a walrus, and an African bush elephant. Now, each of these animals are also threatened, which means that it's possible that they might become endangered unless conditions change. Hello roars, peeps, chirps, and chants. Hello song and hello dance. A world to see. A world to know. Where to begin? Hello, hello. The end. Now there's a note from the author here on the last page and I wanted to read a portion of it to you. Many people don't know a lot of these animals even exist. You can help change that. Find out more about them. Head to the library, go on the internet, and share your interest and enthusiasm with everyone you know. You could even write a letter to one of the incredible conservationists working to protect them and keep the places they live safe. The more people that know about these creatures, the better chance they will share this planet with us for many years to come. It starts with saying, hello. I invite you to think about your favorite part of the story and talk about that with the people that you're with. We're gonna to travel to the museum now to look at some works of art. Let's imagine how we might get there. Since we're talking about opposites today, let's think about opposite modes of transportation that we might be able to take. Could you take a giant cruise ship that holds thousands of people or could you take a teeny tiny tricycle 
that only has enough room for one? Or could you take a supersonic jet that travels really fast? Or could you take a tugboat that chugs along really slowly? You decide. Once you've decided, if you'd like, you can close your eyes and imagine yourself going. Ooh, that was a really interesting journey today, depending on which mode of transportation you decided to take. I'm really glad that we made it. In order to get ready to look at our works of art, we're going to be doing an experience I'm calling our Mindfulness Minute. Mindfulness is taking the time to slow down and really pay attention to what you're doing. Since we're talking about opposites today, we're going to be doing some mindful movements that are opposites of each other. So feel free to skip any movements that don't feel comfortable or move in a way that does feel comfortable to you. To begin, let's get into a comfortable position. And we're going to take a big deep breath in through our nose and out through our mouths. I think we might need some music to help us do our mindful movements today. Ready? Much better. If you'd like, you can try to guess which movement is going to come next. So I'm going to do a movement and then we're going to do the opposite of that movement. Ready? Let's get started. Let's bring our hands up in the air and bring them down to the ground. Let's bring our arms wide and then bring them in to be narrow. Let's close our hands together and open them. shoulders up gently and down gently. Let's turn our head to the right and then to the left. Let's make a happy face and our sad face. Now let's shake it out. Take another deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Thank you for making some mindful movements with me today. I feel much more ready to look at some really amazing works of art. We're going to look at some works of art from the museum's collection together. If you'd like, you can scroll down on the page to get a closer look at the images we'll be viewing. Feel free to pause the video at any time to do this. Take a close look at this work of art. What do you see? Let's look at all the sides of this work of art. What new details do you notice? What words would you use to describe this work of art? This is a crest mask or headdress called Chiwarakun. It was created by a Bamana artist from West Africa. It represents a particular animal. What clues do you see that might help us figure out what animal it might be? This headdress represents an antelope, an important animal in Bamana culture. Headdresses like this one would have been worn on the heads of male dancers, and the headdresses are always danced in pairs, one male and one female. The pair would be danced together to the sounds of drums to bring the rain, clear the fields, and harvest the crops. Imagine wearing this headdress. How would you feel? How would you dance? Let's see how another artist created a work of art inspired by an animal that is very different from this one. Look carefully at this work of art. What do you see? Let's look at all the sides of this work of art. What do you see now? What words would you use to describe this work of art? This 
is a standing dog made by a Colima artist from Mexico. This dog is probably a Tuchichi, which is a hairless dog breed. There are many stories from ancient Mesoamerica that suggest that dogs were companions of the dead on their journeys to the afterlife, which is why they might have been included in a tomb. What animal would you choose to be your helper today? How is this work of art different from the last work of art we looked at together? Let's think about the words that we use to describe each of these works of art. Are there any words you used that are opposites of each other? What opposite words would you use to describe these animals? Creatures come in all shapes and sizes from all over the world. Think about creating your own creature that has opposing characteristics. Maybe it has a very long neck, but very short legs. Or maybe it can roar very loudly, but it moves quietly. If you'd like, talk about your ideas with the people that you're with. Now that we looked at some art together, let's travel back home so we can make our own art. So get in your giant cruise ship, or in your teeny tiny tricycle, or get in your supersonic jet, or get in that slow moving tugboat, and let's head home. For our art making project today, we are going to be making our own creature sculptures with recyclable materials. So we've been talking about opposites today, which is something you can consider if you'd like when you create your creature. Thinking about traits that could be long or short, big or small, maybe you're going to make a creature that we've talked about today, or maybe you're going to create your own creature that you've invented and created with your own imagination. It's totally up to you. This can also be a great research opportunity if you want to learn more about some of the animals that we talked about today, particularly some of the ones that might be endangered or threatened. So we can do all those different options and remember you're the artist, so you get to decide what you want to make your sculpture of. So we're gonna need a few different materials for our project today. We're going to need some tape or glue, a scissors, some drawing materials. I'm gonna use markers and a pencil today, but you could use colored pencils, crayons, pens, anything you have around your home. Um, I have some colored paper. You can use any kind of paper you have in your home, any color, shape, or size. Um, and then I'm gonna be using cardboard tubes today from toilet paper rolls, but you can also think about using cardboard boxes or other materials that you can find in your recycling bin to construct your creature. So I'm gonna show you one way to make them with a cardboard tube, but there's so many different ways that you can make your own creature using recyclable materials, and you can even use some of the techniques that we use today with this paper tube, but use different materials. So to start, um, you can think about you know what your creature might want to look like. So I'm interested in thinking about making a giraffe because I really like that giraffes have long necks and so I was thinking about playing with that idea of long versus short and thinking about those opposite traits. Um, but I might want to get a little creative and make it my own. So I was thinking about covering one of my tubes in this yellow paper to kind of make the body of my giraffe. And I might actually make this a little bit shorter. So I'm just gonna use my scissors and cut it. So that's a little shorter. And what I'm gonna do is cover this in my yellow paper. So I'm just gonna cut a strip of paper to cover it with. And remember, the best materials to use for this project are the ones that you already have. So don't worry about what you have. This is a great project to dig in your recycling bin and just get creative and use whatever you have around your home. So I'm gonna use some tape to tape this onto my tube here. And you saw I just kind of measured out to make sure that the paper would be long enough and I'm just gonna put some tape to secure it in place. And if you've watched We Wednesday before, you know that I love cardboard tubes. They're such a great material to use for art making. And you can get them 
very easily from toilet paper or paper towels. All right, so now I have kind of the body of my giraffe, and now I think the next step is to make the neck. So I think I'm actually gonna make the neck out of paper, and then I'm gonna attach it to this body of the tube. So I'm gonna draw the neck of my giraffe here first and then cut it out, but you could also just cut it um, without drawing it. It's totally up to you. Sometimes I find it's a little bit easier to draw it first, but it depends on what you're making. So I wanted to make a really long neck. And I might add ears just so I kind of remember that I wanted ears, but I might not cut those out, we'll see. And sometimes you draw things and you can always kind of change it with your scissors. Or you can always try again if you don't like it. So now that I have a long neck, what do you think my trait should be that's short? Do you have any ideas for me? I might make really short legs. I don't know, what do you think about that idea? Have you decided which opposite traits you're going to use for your creature? So now I have my long neck for my giraffe here. That's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of a really skinny neck too. Maybe that could be two other opposing traits, right? Is skinny and fat here with my, my body. So now I want to attach it and I'm actually going to cut a slit into my tube here so that I can kind of fit it into the tube. So this can be a technique that you can use with other materials is you can kind of make a bend in your tube and then just cut. You might need to try it a few times or get a grown up to help you. So now I have a slit here that I can kind of slip something in. So now I can slip my giraffe head into it. And now I have kind of the neck of my creature here. And you can secure it with tape so that it stays. But that's kind of a nice way to attach something when you're trying to make things that are three-dimensional or that they pop out with two-dimensional objects like paper kind of have to play around with it a little bit. So now I have my skinny neck, my skinny long neck, with my rather short fat body, which is kind of silly, but I kind of like it. So now I think I might need to make my short legs. I think I'm gonna use a different technique to attach those legs. So I'm just gonna cut some paper. And those are pretty short. That might be a good length for for me to use and I'll need four of them for my four legs and another technique you can use when you're making sculptures out of recyclable materials is tabs so if you just fold a little tab here what you can do is then you can glue or tape that little bend in your tab to your whatever you're attaching it to and then that will help it to stand so I'm gonna use some more tape to attach my four legs. Okay, so now I have my short legs with my long neck, my skinny neck, my fat body, and it actually will stand up if you let it a little bit. So I think next would be to add some details. So you can add details with your drawing materials or you could cut and paste more paper. On top of this, I think I might add some giraffe spots with markers. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some more drawing here.
so now I have my spots on my giraffe and I think the last thing that they're missing is a tail. So I'm going to get a long piece of paper for this one. I'm going to play with that idea of long and short again and make a really long tail for my giraffe, even though that might not be what they look like in real life. You're the artist, so you can make your creature look however you want. So all I did with this piece of paper is I just wrapped it around my finger, pulled it kind of tight so that the paper can hold its shape, and then I let go, and now I have this nice long curly cue for a tail here. And I'm just going to use some more tape to attach that to the end. So that is going to be our animal creature sculptures out of recyclable materials. Thank you for joining me today here at We Wednesday. We hope you had fun. I wanted to show you another example of a creature sculpture that I made. So this is the one that we made together out of that cardboard tube. This is my giraffe with my long neck and my short body and short little legs, and my long curly tail. I made another creature out of a paper towel roll, so another cardboard tube. So they have a very long body and I cut out some holes for the mouth. And you can see I used that technique that we learned together um, with paper tabs to help add some elements that would pop out. So there are so many different ways to do it and so many different materials that you can use to create your own creature sculptures. We would love to see yours. You can share them with us on social media and use the hashtag STLArtMuseum and WeWednesday. We hope to see you next time. Keep on creating. Bye.